Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Saffer and this is Kitco News. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for the latest. Well, let's begin with news from the Federal Reserve. In an expected decision, the FOMC has decided to hold interest rates steady at their current range of five and a quarter to five and a half percent, the highest level in over two decades. However, Fed Chair Jerome Powell indicated that an interest rate cut could come as soon as September. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Whether the totality of the data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks are consistent with rising confidence on inflation and maintaining a solid labor market. If that test is met, a reduction in our policy rate could be on the table as soon as the next meeting in September. Powell emphasized that the Fed is attentive to risks on both sides of its mandate, balancing inflation and employment. And he noted that while the job market remains strong, it's not overheated. Powell also mentioned that downside risk to the Fed's labor mandate is real, highlighting the importance of maintaining economic stability. Now, despite holding interest rates steady, the Fed's policy is described as, quote, effectively restrictive, aiming to manage both inflation without stifling economic growth. Interestingly, Powell acknowledged that consumer spending has slowed but remains solid, and the U.S. economy seems to be, quote, normalizing. Well, when asked by a reporter about the possibility of a larger interest rate cut, Powell stated, a 50 basis rate cut is not something we're thinking about right now. now. Here's another interesting nugget that came out of the press conference. Powell addressed the topic of a central bank digital currency, or a CBDC, saying that they're not looking to implement anything at the moment. Take a listen. Digital finance is, in, is an area that's having, that has really significant implications for, for payments generally, instant payments. And, it, you know, it's something that's going to really change the way it's going to make more efficient and hopefully safer and all those things, the way payments are made around the world. And so we, are, we have people who are researching that and trying to keep up to speed because we play an important role in the payments sector, <clears throat> both as a, you know, as a convener and as an operator, too. Um, in terms of a CBDC, there's really nothing new going on. There's not much going on at all. Um, we're not, we don't have the authority to uh, issue a, CB, a, you know, a retail CBDC that, that's available to the public. We're not seeking that authority. Um, so what we're doing is keeping up with, uh, keeping up with developments there. It, pretty much every major central bank in the world is, is at least doing, a, doing that. Some of them are actually seriously looking at implementing a CBDC. We're really not. We're really just evaluating, you know, uh, the, the story and what's happening out there. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's work that we need to be doing, that, which could be very beneficial down the road. But we don't have, on, on a CBDC, we, we don't have any plan to, we would need to go to Congress and we have no plan to do that. We're not, no one here has decided that we think it's a good idea yet. A dovish comments from Powell extended a rally in stocks, pushing up the S&P 500 and also the NASDAQ. Treasury yields were down across the curve, and the dollar slipped against all of its developed market peers. And traders continue pricing in a minimum of two rate cuts this year, with the first expected at the Fed's next meeting. Stay tuned as we continue to monitor and provide updates on the Federal Reserve's actions and their impact on the markets. For more insights and expert analysis, keep watching Kitco News. I'm Jeremy Safran. Thanks for watching.